when I heard the word purity, I was so drawn to it. I was like, yes, my whole life I've, wow. I've been having sex outside. Of I've been doing all these things, but it's beyond just having sex outside of marriage. But when I got to the church, that's what I had thought that it meant was no sex before marriage, right? The word yeah. purity actually means to be uncontaminated, yeah. right? And so um, here I am, like, I'm excited about the word purity. I want anything that's close to Jesus. And so as we're researching um, to write this book, we found out that there's this huge, like, cancel purity culture. And I'm like, no, right. don't cancel it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's because the church has made it all about you're a bad person if you have sex before marriage. You're condemned to hell. But purity is not about virginity. Yeah. Purity is about having a heart that is after the Lord. Hello, friends. I'm Brenda crouch. I believe the winds of global change compel us to the mysteries that speak to path and purpose. In a time of amplified chaos, there is a divine compass to navigate the conditions that drive our everyday decisions. For the next 30 minutes, we'll explore stories and the knowledge of sojourners who will point the way to the secrets that lie before us. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Well, my guests today have seen well behind that curtain of the adult entertainment industry. They have seen the destruction that it brings to society, to families, to women, to men, and to children. There's no one that is untouched. And I want you to just hold on because Richard and Brittany Delamora are a husband and wife team who are addressing these issues. They are parents of a beautiful baby girl and another one on the way. They're pastors and evangelists. They're passionate advocates for people in the porn industry. As a former adult film star, Brittany rose to the pinnacle of success in the adult entertainment industry, landing over 250 roles in film. But this only left her with deep feelings of despair, leading her to cope with drugs, alcohol, and ultimately a failed attempted suicide. Her story is inspiring, it's authentic, and their ministry, Love Always, is powerful. Brittany and Richard, you are dear friends of mine, and I really like to call you Mi Familia because yes, I feel like we're so close to one yeah. another. And I want to I want to tell you how much I appreciate you being here today. Thank you for giving us your time. Thank you Thank so you. much for having us, Brenda. We love and adore you so much, and it's a blessing to be here with you today. Love you too, and you look amazing, by the way. So do and you, little mama. You're, <laughs> you're pregnant with your second little baby. Yes. And I'm so excited for you. When are you due? Uh, April 26th. Oh, but my I goodness. feel like right. I'm due tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're right there. <laughs> well, listen, I want you guys to first start out with, for our audience today, just give us the foundation of your story, Brittany. Where did things um, really begin for you and how were you led into the porn industry uh, tell us your story. Give us those highlights and then tell us, lead, lead us into how the two of you met. Okay. That's like my favorite story. So um, <laughs> I grew up in a, in a, just a broken household, a lot of emotional verbal abuse. And I started searching for love in all the wrong places. Um, I was so starving for affirmation because I didn't get that growing up. And so here's the porn industry opening up its arms to me, uh, saying, we love you, you're gonna be a star, like basically come with us. And, you know, I had seen things on, you know, the Eat True Hollywood story about, you know, women making it look so glamorous and so desirable. And I thought, well, surely everybody loves these women because they're so gorgeous and they looked like everything that I thought that I wanted to become. And so I didn't have a lot of love for myself, a lot of respect, and I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for this. So. Got into the porn industry. I was there for a total of seven years. Um, it was not what I expected. You know, in the beginning of my time being in the porn industry, uh, there was, it was so far from glamorous. They pair me up with old men and make me look like a little girl. And I had to eventually say no to these scenes because I had this conviction, yeah. like even not knowing God, I had a conviction that yeah. you guys are encouraging yeah. pedophilia. You're encouraging molestation and I can't be a part of this. Um, and so fast forward um, about to my seven year mark, I had, I had met Jesus at one point in my career um, and I received a Bible. And after that, I'm on a plane to film my very last, what would become my very last porn scene. And I'm reading the book of Revelation um, and I'm reading 
chapter two, verse 20 through 23, that says, I have this thing against you. You tolerate that woman named Jezebel. She leads my people into sexual immorality. I've given her time to repent. And if she doesn't repent, I'll cast her and her children into a sick bed. John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, right? It's that moment where I started crying on the airplane and I said, God, I'm so sorry. I had no idea that I was leading people into sin. Please forgive me, Lord. And the Holy Spirit brought his love and his grace to that truth. And he said, Brittany, this isn't the life that I have for you. The life that I have for you will overflow with so much love, joy, and peace. And if you would just quit the porn industry today, I would bless your life like Come no man on. ever could. Come on. So I went to the porn set to that day and I said, you guys will never see me again. This is the last day you'll ever see me. Started telling everybody about Jesus and I made that my very last scene. Um, and then I started going to church and I, this handsome man right here was preaching a message and he was saying, ladies, I have a word for you right now. Ladies, I want you to know that you are a woman of God and that you are worthy of real true love. And if your man isn't treating you as a woman of God, he needs to step up or step out. Show him the exit sign because you're worthy of real true love and you are worth the wait. That was the first time that I'd ever heard that I was worthy of real true love. And those words wow. like exploded my heart where I was just like, he's right. I need to break up with the guy that I'm dating because even though he actually brought me to this church, he wants me to go back to stripping. He wants me to have sex before marriage. And it was just all these things that I had been getting convicted of. So I broke up with him, took one year off of dating, um, said to the Lord, no, no dating. Cause I want to have no distractions. And I also want to practice sexual purity. Yeah. And so after my year was up, um, and growing in the Lord, he did a healing work that year because I had no distractions, um, about eight months wow. later. And asked me out and I married that handsome preacher and the rest <laughs> oh, changed <is> my life. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. And I love how you said that, you know, this wasn't an overnight thing. You didn't just jump from one relationship into the next one. Right. You jumped from that old dynamic of, of relationship, that old foundation, which was fractured into the new one of Jesus. Amen. And you said, Lord, I want to know who am I in you and, and what does that mean to be valued, to be adored and to be cherished? And wow, yeah. how, how that changes the paradigm yeah, and absolutely. all the time, this whole time, God was preparing the two of you for one another. So Richard, what was that like for you? I mean, how did God put a little spotlight on Brittany and, you know, what happened in your heart? Um, when it came to Brittany, God, there were so many spotlights that hit my heart. I mean, besides the fact that she's drop dead gorgeous. Gorgeous, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you on know, the but inside I, too. You know what? All, you know what always <laughs> touched my heart about Brittany? What made her so different was that she was a servant. You know, when I seen Brittany, she was serving in our greeting ministry. She was outside serving. She would help us in our homeless ministry in our church, and she was always serving. And I think. That's what caught my heart. She kind of reminded me of Ruth a little bit, how like Ruth and Boaz, how Ruth was just out there yeah. serving, serving. And that's what I loved about her. Her heart was gold. And um, it was just amazing to see the transformation in this woman's life. You know, um, if Brittany didn't say she was an you know, ex adult film star, most people wouldn't know that that's what she went through. But that is the beauty and the grace of God, because God will take a broken thing, restore it and make it so beautiful. And I believe my wife is the epitome of that. Just seeing the restoration yeah. grace on her life is my best friend. And uh, uh, I know her beauty shines, but her heart shines maybe a, a lot brighter, but it's probably in the same comparison <laughs> inside and oh, out. Uh, my best I think friend, her heart, her. yeah, her heart is her beauty Absolutely. Uh, first and for foremost. And yep. just, you know, that's so true, Brittany, you wear the image of God, you, you're a, an image bearer. And to see that kind of transformation, I think that's why people are so drawn to your story yes. because it is authentic. So, you know, that leads me to, let's talk about your book. You've got a new book out and, you know, the concept of purity is one that I think culturally we've kind of turned the tables on uh, old school, uh, you know, what is purity? We've we've almost condemned the the message of purity and and rejected it. And so I think we've got to be we've got to redefine what is purity. And your book is called A Call. It's it's titled A Call, a Call. to Purity. 
correct? Thank you so much. So because I didn't grow up in the church, when I heard the word purity, I was so drawn to it. I was like, yes, my whole life I've, oh. I've been having sex outside. Of, I've been doing all these things, but it's beyond just having sex outside of marriage. But when I got to the church, that's what I had thought that it meant was no sex before marriage, right? The word yeah. purity actually means to be uncontaminated, yeah. right? And so um, here I am, like, I'm excited about the word purity. I want anything that's close to Jesus. And so as we're researching um, to write this book, we found out that there's this huge, like, cancel purity culture. And I'm like, no, right. don't cancel it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's because the church has made it all about you're a bad person if you have sex before marriage. You're condemned to hell. But purity is not about virginity. Yeah. Purity is about having a heart that is after the Lord. See, you can't, you can't. Uh, you can be a virgin and still have a filthy heart. That's not purity. God looks at the um, God looks at the heart, yeah. but it's man that looks at the outward appearance. And so God is always looking at what is the condition of your heart. Mm. Why are you doing what you're doing? And so we wrote this book because we want to help people get their hearts right before the Lord. I mean, purity goes much deeper than just sex. It's are you battling with fears and insecurities? Are you do you have toxic relationships in your life? Are you maybe a toxic person because of what you've been? Experiencing? exposed to and we want to help you to get your heart right to get your heart yeah. pure because when your heart is pure your actions will be pure and mm. nobody's perfect of course you're gonna you, you're gonna fall you're gonna stumble though the righteous fall yeah. seven times they get back up eight times yeah. right so just keep yeah. getting yeah. back up again but it's about the condition of your heart so good it totally is. And I love that, that you've addressed this. Uh, you know, I think there's a, a misconception kind of on both sides of that issue of purity um, and, and how you said uncontaminated. You know, I, I think we've had a propensity historically in the church to put it about our works, to, to make yeah. it about our outward expressions, our outward, uh, you know, being more legalistic about how we do things. And we're not looking at the heart. Yeah. And I was just thinking this morning about, I mean, this sounds random, but uh, I was listening to a beautiful uh, worship song. I, I didn't even know who the singer was. And I thought, you know, she has a beautiful voice, but what I'm hearing in my spirit is the beautiful heart that is yes. singing to the Lord. Yeah. And I think that's what God looks for is what's on our heart. He's looking for the expression of our heart, which is why as we move in to uh, the, uh, in the, through the blood of Christ in the, as we're clothed in his righteousness, there's no more condemnation. God is looking at the heart. So mm -hmm. we have to then say, search me, O God, and show mm -hmm. me if there's anything unclean or a wicked way that even I'm not aware of because the heart is, uh, it, it's deceptive or, or it's uh What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, deceived. Deceptive. It's awesome yeah. deceived. And so we, it's a process mm -hmm. of coming free. Uh, and it's a process of becoming more like him. So I think you're correct in that our emphasis is not really placed on the things we're doing or saying, but it's really about a position of the heart. Yes. So how do we go from a place where you once were, Brittany, where there was defilement, there was contamination, as you were saying, to coming into a place where you are uncontaminated because of the blood of Jesus. And the manifestation of that is the beauty that we see. There's depth to that beauty. This is not a, a just a facade anymore. There's something substantial and, and real there. Tell us about how you, what's that process look like of, of coming free and finding substantial meaning and beauty where you're uncontaminated? Yeah, so we really dive deep into this in our book, but um, that year that I took off of no dating, I mean, I had no distractions. I went from making like over $30,000 a month, could make 100000 in a weekend to making $11.25 an hour. So I had like, I had a little yeah. cheap phone, couldn't afford internet, you know, so I didn't yeah. even have social media. Like it was just me and Jesus. I'd wake up, seek the Lord through uh, worship prayer. And then I'd read my Bible, go to work, mm -hmm. come back home, listen to a sermon or go to church, whatever the day held. Um, yeah. And it was really, I was consumed with the presence of God. I also spent um, a lot of time in that year doing fast. Yeah. Some things don't break off, but through prayer and fasting and the Holy Spirit taught me so much. He taught me the meaning of casting thoughts down. So like when I came to the Lord, 
Uh, my mind was riddled with mm. lust and so much negativity. I mean, there were so much, so much slander and curse words running through my head. And yeah. so I, the Holy Spirit would say, cast it down. And I'm like, well, what does that even mean? And so the Holy Spirit taught me when a thought pops into your head that you don't want to be in agreement with, it's an mm. imagination. It comes against the word of God. You need to say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I cast that thought down. I'm not going to think about it. And then he would encourage me to repent for it. Lord, I'm sorry mm. for thinking that way. Please forgive me and help me to think better. And then I would start focusing on things as it teaches us in Philippians mm. that are noble, praiseworthy, and true. So I would start just singing a worship song in my head, or if I was in my car, I'd do this out loud. Um, and so it does take practice, but the Bible is so full of wisdom yeah. and revelation. And then when you top it off with a relationship with the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher and our counselor, let me tell you, you can get set free from anything oh. and everything that you may be battling with today. And the Holy Spirit is going to help you to pursue purity. Yes. beautiful. Yes. Yes. So you're really describing those micro decisions and those choices that are made and they're baby steps as you come face to face with those with those things that want to um, resurface or that are familiar, and right. you know they might come in the form of a word or a thought or whatever it is. And so taking that, facing it, not ignoring it, not mm -hmm. denying it, but actually acknowledging it, and then Absolutely. saying, "I'm going to bring you in under submission." And you're going to, you're going to leave. You're not yeah. going to be a part of my wheelhouse any longer because I have the mind of Christ. And yes. I love that that is, is such, I can relate to that because I had to do that in, you know, uh, on many levels myself. It's really the same for all of us, whether we're struggling with porn, uh, porn addiction or a lifestyle that, uh, is involved in something like that or, or something else. It really doesn't matter if it's something that wants to pull you away from the person of Christ. It is, uh, it's, it's taking you in the wrong direction. And that would be Absolutely. really the definition of sin, right? Yes. Uh, and yeah. the sinful nature. Yeah. Yeah. So as we talk about those micro, uh, decisions and those choices and acknowledging these things, um, I think that what's so effective about your program and your ministry is that you're helping people with those small things. You're not just blanketing this with a broad brush and saying, porn is bad. Don't do it. That's not what your message really, you know, we could say that it encompasses that, but that's not the crux of your message. Your message, and Richard, I want you to speak to this for men who are really struggling so many of those men are in ministry. We know this, right? Men yep. in ministry, pastors even struggle. Mm -hmm. And I think that the stresses that they're often faced with and the depletion that they're faced with because they're not filling up again. And they're uh, so many times pastors are trying to work on smaller budgets and they're wearing many hats and they end up uh, vulnerable to the enemy's uh, you know, his, uh, his wiles, you know, yeah, yeah. Strategy, and, and they can get caught up. We all are on the internet. So it's so easy to be able to uh, fall down the wrong trail yeah. and it's a rabbit hole. Can you speak to that for men who just feel trapped and they, because it's so secretive, how do they break that cycle when their own willpower has failed them time and time again? Would you, would you talk about that? Yeah, I think um, for pastors and leaders, I just really just having that accountability yeah. and somebody to be able to talk to. And I know the enemy is so quick to condemn us, right? But the Bible mm -hmm. teaches us in Romans 8, 1, that there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And I think Amen. that's what the enemy wants to do to pastors and leaders who are struggling privately. Because mm -hmm. if you can struggle privately, then he can keep you bound and he can keep you hindered. And not only mm -hmm. that, you won't even be able to broach uh, topics like this when it comes to mm -hmm. pornography, like if That's you really true. think about it, you know, the porn statistics say that seven out of 10 men in the church battle with porn, three out of 10 are women and 50% are pastors and leaders who habitually watch pornography, right? So if the statistics are this high, and this is a huge battle and an epidemic, not in the real, but also in the body of Christ, yeah. then we need to be talking about it more. Yeah. But how could you talk yeah. about something that you're bound to? How could you mm -hmm. talk about something mm -hmm that secretly and privately you're not doing well and i like yeah. what you and you're ashamed of and you're <laughs> yeah. ashamed of it right right because yeah. i you mean from from a yeah yeah and also too from a congregation point of view it's easy to be like 
hey, pastor, uh, I'm messing up, you know, but when it comes to right. a pastor, what comes with it, you know, it's a whole different ordeal, right? Yeah. There's like a level of pride. Absolutely. Right? That, Almost that, that shouldn't be there, but there is. Yeah, that could come against you. So yeah. I would really just or say fear, fear, fear that if you're found out, you're condemned, yeah. you know, who's going to listen to you been. now? Yeah. But then, you know, even if you get found out, it doesn't matter. Because I think the big premise and focus should be on a pastor's life is my relationship with God. Amen. Yes, and, yes. And I, that was the struggle with Saul, right? When Saul fell short and he wasn't obedient to what God told him to do. And when the prophet Samuel came to him, but he was more focused on his image yeah. and his mm-hmm. relationship with the people rather than the, uh, rather than his relationship that's with good. God. And I think yeah. that's the struggle there. And um. You know, I would just encourage just pastors, leaders, and just people in general. Mm. You know, Brenda, you talked about the small battles, and the scripture teaches us that it's the little foxes that spoil the vines. And yeah. what I learned to do, and especially with my life, Psalm 26 2 says, Test me and try me, Lord, examine my heart. Mm. I think, Brenda, we need to be better examiners and better mm. people to be aware of what's going on in our lives. Because isn't it interesting, like, for instance, if I talk to a pastor right now and say, how many people got saved on Sunday? You probably would say me the number. 37 people got saved. Great. (laughs) How many people are in attendance this Sunday? Oh, man, I had 752 people. It's interesting how we are so cognizant and aware of what's going on in our church, but we don't do the same thing when it comes to our heart. Yeah. Right, right, right. And And I think that... You're, you know, I remember a time of, of becoming so desperate for the change yes. that I wanted Jesus, yes, and that purity of that relationship, yes, more than I wanted my next breath. And yes. I guess the place of desperation is the place of our true beginning. Wouldn't you Come agree on. with that? Good word, a- absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. think we have the desire where we're desperate from him and we're just aware of what's going on. And what I mean by this awareness, for instance, like pastors, leaders, you don't have to commit adultery. Like you don't have to let all this like explode and come out before you do something like that. Yeah. What happens yeah. like, for instance, if you find yourself maybe like you like enjoy talking to the opposite sex more than you, more than your wife or your husband, you might have a problem there. Or maybe if you're looking at an image on social media too long, or if you find yourself wanting to watch porn, right? But you're not watching it, but that desire is in you. Mm -hmm. I would first stop and say this, like, why do I have these feelings? Yeah. Why do I feel this way? And then from there, talk to, you know, your accountability, Mm -hmm. talk to your pastor or whoever's on your board, whatever it may be, because I would rather have you address it at a small stage then for it to yeah. fester up, blow up, and you know, you end up, you know, committing adultery, right? Or having yeah. an affair. And I just think like I just think we need to do better, better just being yeah. aware, asking the Holy Spirit, is there anything in me? Is there anything yeah. in me, God, that that it might cause me to sin, might cause me to stumble? And I believe if we learn to do these things, then we won't hear these alarming statistics about pornography. Yeah. And we won't hear every month about a new pastor you know, committing yeah. adultery because they weren't aware of the impurities. Right, that right. Are. Yeah, what you're speaking to is we have to understand the strategies of the enemy, but also our own vulnerabilities. So yeah. it, this requires acknowledging those things within ourselves, within our own, the fragmented places of our own soul that mm-hmm. we have to deal with. So that means we've got to face our fears. We've got to deal yeah. with our anxieties. We've got to get to the root of where those come from Absolutely. because those are the things that leave us wide open and put us in the devil's crosshairs, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I really believe that that's partly, uh, this is one of the tools that he uses to just take people out. It destroys families. It destroys uh, it destroys people's identity. It destroys their ministries, uh, yes. whichever, wherever they're living, whatever purpose they're fulfilling. And we can't really fulfill a purpose if we're living a lie and mm. dealing with uh, this kind of hypocritical, oh. you know, we, it's not our place to look from the outside in, but it, we're talking, what we're speaking to is uh, where you as a as an individual can come accountable to God and then bring that mentor in, as Richard just said, that that God would assign to you to be able to walk through the process. Yeah. And yeah. I don't want to run out of time, but speaking of process, you guys um, have some resources that are incredible in your website. Uh, tell us about search 
and what that is established for, how does it work, and how is it available to people? Okay, so on our website, lovealwaysministries.com, we have created two different courses. There's one for men and one for women. It's called Search, How to Stop Watching Porn. Um, We wanted to create one for both men and women because as we know, the statistics, three out of 10 women in church are also watching porn. Right. Wanted to have resources available for you. Um, so the course is available there. We've brought in um, myself. I'm an, I'm an ex-adult star, now a pastor. Um, we have uh, Yama Alexis for the women's course who battled with pornography for 16 years mm. before Jesus Christ set her free. Mm. Um, and wow. then we brought in my husband and Joshua Broom, who is also an ex-porn star, yeah. now pastor, husband, father, doing yeah. incredible things for the Lord. Yes. Um, and so we're, we're bringing in these teachings to help you so that you can stop watching porn once and for all. Um, What we've done is we've just brought in all of the tools that we've learned through the Holy Spirit, through the Bible, um, and to bring those to you. And we're giving you all the tools in one course. And so uh, there are a total of seven lessons. One's a roundtable discussion with everybody involved, and the others are individual lessons. Mm -hmm. Um, We're going to be praying for you, keeping you accountable. At the end, there's also, uh, at the end of each lesson, there's also um, questions to help you dive deep into the issues Mm -hmm. of your heart because it is important to examine your heart so um you'll get what you put into it and we really hope and pray that if you take on this course that you'll follow the lessons and that you'll answer the questions because Mm -hmm. it's set up to bring you success and that's what we want to see we want to stop watching porn if that's what you want you want to stop watching porn we want to see you stop watching porn and so that's why we created search how to stop watching porn Awesome. And I I've just sensed that there's a, a real sense of community that you've established with the four of you coming together to the table, yeah. which that in and of itself is almost a, an encouragement to people to just come out of your cave, your emotional cave and that secret dark place and join this community. And we're here to support you. Is that correct? Yes, yep, absolutely. and we're actually even creating this year um, community groups, online community wow. groups, completely free. We want to bring people together so that they can uh, get accountable and they can stay connected. Mm-hmm. So those are going to yeah. be on lovealwaysministries.com. I love it. And I love the name of it, Love Always. I mean, yeah. isn't that just the, the model of Christ? Yep. He loves us always, no matter uh, where we are, what we've done. There's no pit so deep that he cannot reach. And uh, what a what a change that uh, facilitates for each of us to be able yeah. to have that um, epiphany of his love reach mm-hmm. us in the the deepest parts of our uh, of our own identity, where even we have rejected ourselves. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, to be able to take that label of shame. And to be able to put it away and say, this does not belong to me. This is not mine any longer. Mm -hmm. And to walk in the freedom that Jesus brings. It's amazing how uh, we, through those those baby steps, we begin to grow. And we begin to become equipped. And we put away the childish things. And suddenly, we're in a place where, like you two are, you're able to go out to where the need is. You're not just saying, come to me in the four walls of my pretty little pristine church yeah, where purity on. lives. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're saying, let me take the purity of the love of Christ. Yes. I mean, I'm tearing up thinking about it. I'm going to take the purity of the love of Christ, the undefiled love that yeah. you have never tasted. And I want to bring it out to you so that you can taste and you can see that the Lord is good, right? I mean, tell me about um, some of the work you do when you go out to uh, some of the porn conventions. You've been to Vegas. Um, I don't know where all you go, but I know. Yeah. Chicago, New some... Jersey, Miami. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, they're everywhere. Right? Well, yeah. listen, I was a Nevada girl. I was almost Miss Nevada. Well, I was, <laughs> a, I was in one of the Miss one of the Miss Nevadas, uh, but uh, yeah, so that's kind of my wheelhouse that I, I default to is, you know, Sin City, right? But, uh, but I love, uh, I love also the people who I see struggling and just bound. And I know you walk in that kind of anointing and uh, tell us, tell us a story uh, quickly about um, just give us a testimony of somebody that you've met in, maybe one of those scenarios or 
and just out socially where you've seen the fruit come and the change come and the inspiration? I had a woman who was in the porn industry that actually heard my testimony on YouTube, reached out to me on social media. We had her come and live with us. Uh, We thought it was going to be a longer period. It was only for a day. She ended up going back to porn. I was devastated, heartbroken, but kept praying for her. We showed up at a porn convention and I reconnected with her. And um, she just she told me like basically all the prayers I'd been praying for her uh, had started happening. And she was like, I can't take this mm-hmm. industry anymore. Like I definitely need out. So we helped her to get out. Um, she's now living on the East Coast, has a beautiful baby, has a great job, went to back to school um, and wow. is really doing incredible things with her life. And so it's, it's these showing up at the conventions and connecting with women on social media, because I'm so open about my story and they're looking for hope. They're looking for a story that will encourage them to take that step of faith as well to get out. And so just being connected with them and them being able to see the fruit in my life, it helps give them hope so that they too could have a better life. And so, yeah, I mean, we just want to continue helping. I just sent out a bunch of, um, Bibles to several different women that are in and out of the porn or recently yeah. left the porn industry. Um, so we're just, I mean, we're here for any woman and any man mm-hmm. who wants mm-hmm. to get out of the industry. We don't force anything upon anybody, but just showing up at the conventions and making ourselves known and connecting with people, it allows them to see that that there is hope for a better life. Yeah. yeah. So the journey that God placed you both on has equipped you for where you are now. Yes. And you're uh, you're not uh, invincible, but in Christ, you can do all things. And so mm-hmm. you're walking in a, a season of maturity where God has placed you in a position of trust and you are offering solutions to people. And I want to thank you for being with me today. It means a lot to me. I love you both dearly. And I'm uh, always going to be in your court, cheering you on and just anything I can do to... Uh, to support and help promote what you're doing because it is the heart of Christ. And thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. We love you so much. I love you too. And folks, I want to thank you for tuning in as well. I hope that you have been encouraged and that some of the questions that you might have about whether or not porn is bad, what, you know, what's the big deal. I want you to know that this comes from an expert who's been on the other side and there's nothing sweeter than Jesus. So thank you for joining with us today. And I want you to come back again next time to hear another incredible guest. You have a blessed day. I'm Brenda Crouch.